Hello, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous videos, I have shown you how to use Mini Tools Shadow Maker to create backups of your disk, a partition, or even your files and folders. It's a great idea to have some kind of a backup. In the event that your computer crashes, the hard drive goes bad, you get viruses on your computer, or perhaps Windows just doesn't want to boot up, this will allow you to be able to restore from those backups. Now in this video, I'm going to show you Mini Tool Shadow Maker's feature called Sync. Now Sync is similar to a backup, but you don't have none of the flexibility. For instance, if you decide that you need to restore a document, to a previous version, the backup will allow you to do so. Seek, on the other hand, pretty much just copies the file. If you have been a user of OneDrive or iCloud, then you are familiar with this feature. As soon as you make a change or add something to the drive or to the, the sync, then it is automatically copied to its destination. For instance, you have OneDrive and iCloud, they all store the data on, an, on a cloud. Well, the difference with this is it's stored locally. Now you can use either a USB flash disk or you can use a USB hard drive. Now, if you do have something like a NAS, which is a network attached storage, then you can also store the, sync, the file the syncs there. Now it does come in handy, but as I said, it doesn't have that much flexibility, but you don't have to wait for the internet access. All you have to do is plug in the drive and you have complete access to those files. Now the procedure and the process is very simple to use. To use sync, what you'll do is you'll click on the sync button at the top. You're gonna to see this window. Now this window does look familiar. Uh, you have the source and you have a destination. The source, when you click on it, will open a window to show all the drives that are connected. The C drive is your primary drive. This is where your operating system is stored. Even all your documents, files, pictures, videos, everything is stored on the C drive. As you can see, I also have a D drive. Now this is my external drive that I use to back up this computer. And of course, I have all the card readers and I also have USB hard drives connected. Over here, you had the libraries. Now this is only for public folders. Uh, most of you probably don't even use it, but what it is, is it's a folders that's listed in a public domain on the computer. For instance, if you have more than one user account, you can share files, documents, music between the accounts using this public folder. Next, you have the user account. Now, this is the account that is currently signed into the Windows operating system. And what it does is it stores all your, off, your files, your 3D objects, your contacts, your documents, all your downloads, even your bookmarks and favorites. Uh, you also have music, uh, things that's on your OneDrive, as you see here, uh, your My Documents, Templates, Start Menu, uh, anything that's stored onto this account is shown here. Now you can select individual files or folders. You can even open folders to see what's inside them, and then you can automatically check which folders or files that you want to sync. You simply just put a chat mark beside anything that you want to have it done. Up here at the top, you can see the users slash Mr.Fix slash videos. This shows you the destination of the folder that you're currently uh, in. You also have your left and right but arrow buttons. This way you can move back and forth from a previous window or go forward to the video window you were at a moment ago. You can go backwards and forwards. Now, once you have selected the folder or files that you want to do, which I'm going to do here, click OK. Here, you'll see that I have six gigabytes worth of data to back up. 
What it does is it shows the amount of space that you're going to need. It's going to show the folders and the files that's going to back up. Now on the right, you have the destination. Here, you can choose where to want to store it. Now, just like backups, you do not want to store the file and folder sync to the same drive of the source. For instance, if you're, the source is from drive C, you don't want to store your backups and your file syncs on drive C. Because if something wants to happen, you're not, you're going to, your chances are you're going to lose your data. Now here you could choose which drive you want. Now for me, I can either choose drive D or I could go over here and choose drive K. Doesn't matter. Now you can also use shared. Now shared allows you to choose a network drive such as home uh, home servers or if you have a network attached storage which i have shown videos on how to set one up then you can connect it to this and you can have your file syncs done locally to your nas device here it shows you my public this is the folder i've got and the ip address that it's located now, you probably won't see this, and this is one of the things I did not like. If you click Add New, you're going to see a certification dialog. And what this is going to do is going to ask you for the path. It's going to need to know uh, the IP address and a folder for that drive to connect. Now, some devices on the network does require a username and password. Just like most NAS storage devices will have a username and password. What you'll do is enter your uh, path name as you see the, the illustration on here. This is the type of format they want you to use. Enter the necessary username and password and then click OK. Once it's confirmed and available, you'll see the icon for it here. And then you just simply open it. And then you could choose your uh, folder that you want to store it in. Once you have selected where you want to store your data, click OK. Here, you're going to see I got my files here. And over here, this shows you how much space is available and the drive name or folder that the, the, the file sync will occur. Next, let's check on the scheduling. Now, normally it's turned off, which means that you would have to do it manually. If you turn it on, you're able to select how you often or the frequency you would like to have this synced. For instance, you can choose the time and or you can have it start at certain intervals. If you want to do weekly, you could choose the start time and the day of the week that you want to have it done. Monthly, same thing. You just choose the start time and what day of the month that you want it to do. Now, it does have the feature for on event. Now, this is only available with Minitool Shadowmaker Pro and Pro Ultimate versions. This allows you to either create the file sync on the log on feature or it's going to sync your files on the log off feature. Now, once you've chosen your settings, click OK. Next, we have options. Now, options is different than what we had previously when we did backups. What this does is it wants to know the comparison. And what this will do is compare the file attributes between the source and the destination to determine whether or not the file needs to be recopied. For instance, if the source, you compare the source file with the time that it was created or modified to the file that's on the destination. Whichever one's newest will be considered a new version and then it will be copied to the destination. File size, anytime that you make changes to a file, oftentimes the file size will change. This attribute can also be used due to determine whether or not the file has changed. File content can also be used to determine if the 
uh, content of a file has changed. Now, this is a slower process. So if you really have to have the content, then you can also select it. But normally, all you need is the time that the file has been modified and the size of the file to determine whether or not anything has changed before it copies it. Up here, you see the filter. Now, the filtering will go by on the folders that you have selected. If any of these items are in that folder, they're going to be ignored. Once you have your options set up, now it's time to synchronize. Now you have the option to synchronize now, or you can click the arrow and then choose synchronize later. Now if you have a scheduling, you could just choose later, and then when that time comes, then the computer will automatically do the, the synchronization at that time. If you want to, you can go ahead and do it now. Here, you're going to see a new window or a bar pop up. Now, you can see the previous ones that I've done for the previous videos. Here, you'll see the type of backup this is, which says files to sync. These are the folders and files that's going to be synced. And this is going to be the location where it's going to be found. Over here, you're going to see the progress. Over here, you have the stop button. So if you need to interrupt it, you can just click the stop button. Once the file to sync has been completed, you'll notice over here that you still have all the files and folders that were going to be synced and the location that the file sync can be found. Underneath it, you now see the last time it had synced. On the right, you have the option to sync now. And if you click the arrow, you also have the option to edit the source. So if you need to change the source, you can simply click here and change the source of the files to sync. Over here, if you click the three lines, you're going to see delete, if you want to delete the file or the backup sync. Uh, you also can choose edit scheduler, uh, if you need to change the frequency in which the files are to sync. The edit source, as we spoke about a, a moment ago. And of course, you can click locate to open up the location that the file to sync is located. Now, keep in mind that if you're going to use file to sync, then you need to make sure that the hard drive or USB drive, or even if the NAS drive has enough space that you can do the file synchronization. Well, as you can see, once your backups are done, it automatically brings you to the manage. So you can do whatever you need to do and manage all the backups, your file syncs, and so forth. Keep in mind that if you need flexibility to choose which version of files, it is better to use the backup. File sync will only copy files. The moment you change it, it is copied to the destination. There's no going back if you make a mistake. Well, I'm your host, Mitra Fixit. This has been a presentation by EOS Repair. Thank you for watching.